Hi, this is Irv Shapiro with the Dr. Vax channel on a cold and rainy day here in Chicago. So we're going to warm things up by talking about the parts that make up the hot end in your 3D printer. This is part of the 3D printer demystified series. Um, and this particular video is targeted at both beginners and more advanced users of 3D printers. So stay tuned and let's learn something together. In many ways, a hot end is no different than a glue gun. It has a heating element, it has a nozzle, it has a component that pushes the filament to the hot end, through the hot end to the nozzle. In this case, it's a trigger and my finger. It has a computer that controls the motion of the nozzle. In this case, it's me. So in many ways, a 3D printer is an evolution of a hot glue gun. Let's look at a picture on the screen now to see a very simplified example of a 3D printer. So you can see here on the right, there is a roll of filament. That roll of filament is positioned so that the extruder can pull the filament off the reel, off the roll, off the reel of filament, and push it to the hot end. The hot end has two general zones. The zones from the green area down is a hot area. The zones from the black area up is a cool area. It needs to be cool because if your filament melts within the Bowden tube, the tube that's connecting the extruder to the hot end, your filament will jam. So you want your filament to be melted by the nozzle and cool from the heat sink on up. So let's take a look at that hot end diagram in a bit more detail, and then we'll look at an actual hot end that's made by Micro Swiss that I will be putting into my Ender 5 sometime in the next couple of weeks. At the bottom of the hot end, you have a nozzle. This is a brass nozzle that has been coated with a special material to make it more resistant. There are a number of ways that we can make nozzles more resistant. In this particular case, we have a ruby tip on our brass nozzle. They also make wear resistant all steel nozzles. The reason most people use brass nozzles is they conduct heat very well. You can buy a whole assortment of brass nozzles inexpensively. And to give you an idea of what a 0.4 millimeter nozzle looks like, this pin here is 0.4 millimeters. So you can see the size of the filament extrusion that would come from this nozzle. The nozzle is connected to a heat block. In the heat block, you have a heat cartridge and you also have a thermistor. The thermistor is, in essence, a thermometer. It is used to measure the temperature of the heat block and control the power that is going to the heater cartridge. That heats up the heat block, that heats up the nozzle. Now, we don't want the heat from the heat block, you can see it better here, to move up above the heat block. So we have another component called a heat break. You can see that also on the diagram here. This heat break is made of titanium. Titanium does not conduct heat as well as aluminum. Therefore, heat will not travel up as rapidly. On top of the titanium heat break, we have a heat sink. The heat sink is made of aluminum. We want it to pull the heat away from the heat block. And it has a series of fins. Those fins are used to dissipate the heat. There's a fan blowing on this heat sink. That fan will help dissipate the heat. And the reason is we don't want the heat reaching our Bowden tube. Because if we end up with melted plastic in our Bowden tube, our printer will jam. So the components are, just to review here, 
We have the nozzle, the heat block, the heat break. Then we have the heat sink with fins. Then we have our Bowden tube. Now, you'll notice uh, if we go back to the screen, there are two different styles here. There's the PTFE style and the all metal style. The PTFE style is the style used by most Creality printers. In that case, the Bowden tube goes all the way down to the nozzle. The challenge with that is if you don't press that Bowden tube all the way down, if you leave a little gap there, you're going to end up with melted filament between the end of the Bowden tube and the nozzle that will cause a jam. The other problem with the PTFE version is that standard Bowden tubes are really only rated to about 230 degrees. They begin to give off gases that you don't want to breathe above 230 degrees. This blue Bowden tube is called Capricorn tube. It's a much higher end tube. It's still not expensive. It's $12. It's an easy upgrade to your printer. This is rated up to 300 degrees and it's much more accurate. The size of the channel through the tube is very, very precise. That means your filament will move around less. It means that extrusion and retraction will work more reliably. So in the case of a Creality style printer, the coupler that is used, we'll see it here, is a coupler that allows the Bowden tube to go all the way through, and then that will be pushed down to where the nozzle is. Once again, you don't want a gap. In a all metal hot end, the coupler, the Bowden tube will only go into the coupler, and it will be metal from the bottom of the coupler to your nozzle. Now there is a third style of setup, and that is a hot end that has the extruder directly on top of it. Effectively, no Bowden tube. There might be a very, very short tube in there in the Prusa i3MK3. It is a direct extruder printer, and there is a very short tube, PTFE tube in there, between the extruder and the hot end. In general, the advantage is because you don't have a Bowden tube, you can control your filament much more precisely. The disadvantage is it makes the hot end much heavier. That's moving around a lot. So you need more powerful stepper motors. You need a stronger overall structure. So three styles we talked about here. There's the Creality style where the Bowden tube goes all the way down to the nozzle. There's the Bowden tube style that has an all metal hot end. That is often an upgrade and I'll be installing this Micro Swiss all metal hot end in my Ender 5 in the next few weeks to create that style. And there's the Prusa style where the extruder is right on top of the hot end. Now folks, I hope this was uh, helpful to you. You learned something today. If you did, please subscribe, hit that bell so that you find out about when that next video on the Ender 5 and the Micro Swiss hot end comes out. Share this with your friends and most importantly, Leave me comments, questions, answers to other viewers. Let's continue to learn together. Thanks. Have a great day.